styled my hair differently today and it's just like not like look at this it's just ain't it i don't know my hair is really just not loving me today <sighs> but hello um how's everyone doing good awesome let me know write it down comment something whatever you're feeling I don't like it. I hope you all are doing well. I know it's only technically been a week for you, but it's been a couple weeks for me that I'm back here because I've been filming things far in advance. Oh my God, oh my God. So it feels like it's been a while. Um, I am sorry for whatever the hell my hair is doing. I just like cannot with it today. I tried to do those like Velcro rollers on it to make it cute. I don't know, I did something wrong. It's so weird at the front here. Also, my laptop just died. What the fuck was that? Okay, so we are going to be doing another true crime video today. Obviously, hopefully someone's been enjoying these. I know I have. Hopefully you guys enjoy watching it. If not, <sighs> I just feel freaking so off. Okay, let's do this. It is nine o'clock at night. I go to work at midnight. Let's freaking pound this out. This one is weird. Let's get this party started. We will be talking about the death of Troy LaFerrara today. So this case happened in Pennsylvania, which is in the USA, in a place called Sunbury. On the 12th of November, 2013, police attended a crime scene where they found the body of Troy LaFerrara. He was found in the backyard, um, in somebody's backyard, in Sunbury, Pennsylvania, as I mentioned. I'm just going to do a quick little backstory on Troy. So he was born on July 20th of 1971. When he was married, he had been married to his wife for, I think it was three years, if I'm remembering that correctly. I'm not going to mention her or bring her up in this, just because the one article that I did read about her she it, she just didn't want to be dragged into all of this, which like once we get through the story, I think it's pretty obvious to understand why. Yeah, so I'm not going to say her name or show any pictures of her or anything just out of respect. Yes. Anyways, let's move on. I'm getting distracted. They find Troy's body and on him is a cell phone. So police start going through the cell phone, just trying to get some information on what may have happened to him. While they're searching the phone, they start going through Craigslist, where they find that Troy was on Craigslist. So he was on Craigslist searching under like man seeking women. So he was essentially like looking for women to meet up with and have intercourse. They went through the messages and found a woman that he had been recently in contact with and her name was Miranda Barbour. Oh my god, I'm sorry. I keep on like messing around with my drawer. I'm just gonna shut it quick. Anyway, so he had been messaging this woman, Miranda Barbour. So police are going through the messages and see that him and Miranda had plans to meet up on the 11th of November. And they had made a plan for Troy to pay Miranda $100 for sex. So, naturally, Police are like, oh, probably gonna look into this one. So, um, police find Miranda, bring her in, and question her. The reason you're here is there's a guy who was, was murdered, and his name is Troy LaFerra. You answered his ad on Craigslist, right? Yeah. What did his ad say? Um, it implied that you would be paid to go out with this person. That's what okay. the ad implied. Did it say sex, was it sexually explicit? Or was it going to dinner? I mean, that, that would be spelled out on a Craigslist ad. I mean, it was, yes, it was, but okay. I didn't go into it intending to do that. So you were going to meet up with this guy, paint a couple of bucks? Yes. Okay. Were you on the phone with him at all or talking to him? Okay. Message him? We, we were messaging back and forth, yes. Okay. We were just supposed to meet up at Denny's, but it never happened. Meeting never happened? Yes. So I'm, I'm going to ask you right now uh -huh. a very basic, very simple question. Okay. That you, you need to answer either yes or no to. Okay. Were you involved in, or do you have any knowledge of, the death of that guy, the death of Troy? 
No. So Miranda's talking to police. She got like got brought in for questionings, naturally. So Miranda is telling police what happened and she tells police that she did kill Troy, but she did it in self-defense. So obviously there's something on your mind that you'd like to share with us. Most definitely. Okay. Would you like to tell me about that a little bit? I arranged to meet up with him and I pulled in the mall. I saw him. He got in my car. Everything seemed fine and as soon as I put the car in park, everything just completely flipped upside down. I didn't know what to do. He just attacked me. What was he doing to you? One hand was on my throat. Well, the other hand was trying, well, touching me down there. What I'm getting from what you're talking is basically he's been really aggressive groping you. Yes. And I do have three knives in my car. I usually carry one on me and I just grabbed it. What happened uh, after you took the knife? I stabbed him once and it didn't do anything. And I stabbed him again and it didn't do anything. He was it was still being continued. There was nothing that changed. There's just blood, like a horror scene in my car. So they also had brought in Miranda's husband, because turns out not only was Troy married, Miranda was also married. They bring in Miranda's husband for questioning as well. I mean, his name is Elliot. So Miranda like tells the story of self-defense and that's the reason that she killed Troy was because, you know, he was groping her and Whatever, that's the story she told. Well, police talk to Elliot and he gives them a completely different story. Elliot tells police that him and his wife Miranda had conspired to kill someone together. That's just like something they wanted to do was murder somebody together. So Elliot tells the story about how Miranda met up with Troy as planned in the parking lot and Troy gets into the car. And so Elliot is hiding in the backseat of the car under a blanket, waiting for his wife to give a signal. So his wife gives the sing signal and that's when Elliot gets up from under his blanket and like Troy's here, right? From what I understand, Troy's here in the car. And then Elliot like wraps a cable around him to hold him down and Miranda starts stabbing him to death. So Miranda ended up stabbing him 20 times which is a bit excessive. And she's quoted as saying that Troy was still choking and gasping for air um, when they were looking for somewhere to dump his body, which is disturbing. Like even when you see videos of them talking about what happened, especially Elliot, like it's very emotionless. It's really creepy to watch. Yeah. So they are looking for a place to dump Troy's body and just like throw him in somebody's yard, obviously, because that's where he was found. Immediately after, they go to Walmart to get some supplies. So they buy like paper towels, garbage bags, carpet cleaner, um, and seat covers, like just kind of the whole shebang. And then, you know, after they get all these nice supplies um, from Walmart to clean up the crime they just committed, they go to a strip club because it's Elliot's 22nd birthday and they want to party after just murdering somebody. So that's nice. So I just want to give a little background to who Miranda Barbour is because her story is wild. Um, there's a lot of that has happened to her. There's a lot of trauma. There's a lot of I don't know, there's still a lot to this. So Miranda obviously gets arrested after all the information of the crime gets out. And so she's sitting in jail and decides that she has more to confess. So she starts telling the story while she's in jail about how she is a satanic serial killer and was a part of this cult. She previ previously lived in Alaska and was a part of this like cult gang kind of situation up in Alaska where they just like murdered a bunch of people 
until she wanted to start confessing all of these murders that she had done. Um, and she said when she was asked how many individuals she had killed, she said, I think it was like I stopped counting at 22. Um, it, it said that she's killed anywhere from 22 to 100 people. This is what she's like telling the officers. She said that she started murdering people when she was at the age of 13. So um, Amanda was abused at a very young age by her uncle when she was living up in Alaska. She obviously probably had significant trauma from that experience. She was sent to prison for 10 years for um, first degree sexual assault on a minor. So after her uncle was sent to jail, it was her, her mom, her dad, and her sister moved to a different area of Alaska, I think probably just to get a fresh start. And for a bit, things started to get better for the family. But of course, like Miranda experienced crazy trauma um, because of her uncle. And so, she turned 12 and that's when the family started to notice that things were not quite right. So at the age of 12, she started running away from home and that's when she met this 25 year old man who was a self-proclaimed Satanist. And that's when people really saw like just a downward, downward spiral with her. So she's young, like she's 12 years old and running away with this 25 year old man. And her family confirms that around this time she started using heroin, which is young. Yep, yep, that's young. So Miranda is not doing well, obviously. Her family sent her to treatment. That didn't really do anything. She had gotten pregnant at 17, was using heavy drugs and partying a lot, was a part of the satanic I don't know why satanic so hard for me to say, satanic cult. Um, and then her parents decided that they were going to get a divorce, which was also tough on Miranda. So her parents decided to send her to live with another aunt and uncle, not the same ones um, that played a part in the sexual abuse, but a different aunt and uncle. They lived in North Carolina. So they sent her to go live with them and she seemed to be adjusting to the new location like pretty well. Obviously uh, that didn't last. So while she was in North Carolina, that's where she met Elliot Arbor, her future husband. So yeah, they fell, found each other, fell in love. And in October of 2013, they ended up getting married. So that's just like a really brief history of Miranda's life just cause there's a lot. Um, there's just too much to get through with this one. It's actually insane. So she meets up with Elliot and then on their three week anniversary is when they decide, hey, we want to kill somebody for our anniversary. And I think really once you get to know her backstory, it's not that surprising that things turned out the way they did. And from what I can tell, like apart from going to treatment for her drug use, nothing is really mentioned about her being put into like counseling or therapy after being sexually assaulted by her uncle. So there's obviously a lot of unresolved trauma with her. Anyways, I feel like I kind of, I don't know, hopefully this story makes sense. Like I've read it so many times and that my brain, like you know when you read something and there's so many different areas and your brain just like can't remember things. That's what's happening with this one because there's just so much and it's so weird. Yeah, so she tells these stories about murdering all these people. Police decide they're going to look into it and find nothing. Nothing. There's no um, evidence of these murders happening. Yeah, she just um, told all these stories and one of her family members is quoted as saying, Miranda lives in a fantasy world made up in her own mind. She craves attention, is selfish, dishonest, and manipulative. I think just police really looked into it. Like she gave like locations of where body, what bodies were, like tons of st stuff and nothing. They found nothing. Um, one thing though, she did say that there were two men before meeting up with Troy that they had tried to lure to like meet up with a murder. Those men did not uh, show up. 
So that is very lucky for them. Yeah, this was a big deal at the time everyone was talking about this because when she started talking about murdering all these people, they were like, holy, we literally have like, this huge female serial killer on our hands. But yeah, they um, cannot find any evidence to corroborate what she's saying. So it does not seem like it happened. So they found nothing to corroborate this evidence. And then the trial went forward. Um, so Miranda pleaded not guilty um, to murdering Troy, which is just a little insane after everything. <laughs> she said that she like, I don't know, I don't know, she's wild, but um, she was asked why she pleaded not guilty and she literally just said, I didn't want to, which is just weird. And while in prison, Miranda's husband, Elliot, gave himself a nice little uh, teardrop tattoo. So that's nice of him, that's real classy. He is quoted as saying that he is proud of what he did. So that's nice. Neither of, them, neither of them have any remorse for what they did. Um, they're both pretty pleased with their actions. They wanted to kill someone and they did and they're, you know, happy about it. So, folly of dreams, I guess. And I just want to read out this fucking stupid quote that she said. So Miranda says, I know I will never see my husband again. And I have accepted that. I know I wanted to talk about all of this because I know I had a 20 year window where I would possibly get out of jail and I don't want that to happen. If I were to be released, I would do this again. So at least she's honest about it. So yeah, the trial happened. Both of them were found to be guilty of first degree murder and were sentenced to life in prison. At least we know we don't actually have to worry about them being on the streets anymore because they're creepy as fuck. Like people that just like don't give they don't care at all it's fucking creepy i truly feel like none of that made sense like i really am worried that i'm gonna edit this and be like i don't even know what happened it was just a nice newlywed couple that wanted to murder someone that is it for today um hopefully this made sense i will see you next week if you have any like crimes that you would like me to cover or like locations of i don't know if you want just Give me some ideas if you want. If not, I'll keep on picking just random ones. I really like talking about Canadian crimes just because I obviously live in Canada. So that might be a theme that'll happen just for the next little bit. Yeah, I just enjoy it more. Like, I don't know, I just like it more. Anyways, yes. So I will see you next week. Um, thank you so much for watching. Please comment and like and subscribe and share this with people. And yeah, that is pretty much it. Check out my other true crime videos. I have three other ones. This is now my fourth already. Hopefully you enjoyed this and I will see you guys next week. Have a wonderful rest of your day and I will see y'all later. Okay. Bye-bye.